So I've been playing Resident Evil 6. So I was gonna start this video off with this whole spiel about how I love the crazy bonkers side of Resident Evil, but somehow never played Resident Evil 6. But then I realized that some of my super hardcore mega fans might remember that I actually featured in a project regarding RE6 a few years ago. They were all like, I fam, you won't collab. And I was all like, yeah. Even though I'd only seen Let's Play videos of it before, and just kind of played along as if I'd actually played the goddamn game. Uh, am I embarrassed of what I did? No. Am I proud? No. But do I think it's hilarious? <laughs> Hell fucking yeah I do! Anyway, now that I've met my edgy satirical reviewer quota for today, I'd say that it's about time we get to the game. C cue the dubstep! Ooh! Resident Evil 6 tells the tale of a Japanese games developer fallen from grace, desperately struggling to survive in the ever-mobilizing Japanese games market by pandering to Western audiences as much as possible. This mostly being Keiji Inafune's fault and eventually leading to such gems as a somehow even edgier Devil May Cry, a rather dull and colorless rendition of Dead Rising, and a little something something that I could only describe as the stupidest and hypest game ever made. And that game stars 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 member Chris Redfield, Bishi Boy Leon Kennedy, and bald gruff generican Jake, and uh, also their respective butt buddies, all trying to fight another zombie outbreak paired with a zombie war, paired with looking for the antidote, paired with stopping corrupt government dudes, paired with heaps upon heaps of sequel baggage. And now <laughs> would be a good time to admit that despite respecting the ever living fuck out of the atmosphere and game design of the earlier entries, I absolutely love the unapologetic monging that is Resident Evil. And Resident Evil 6 is like the peak of Mount Mong. Being that literally everything explodes, every sentence is a fucking one-liner and every close-up is straight up movie poster material. Somewhere, somehow, someone decided that this game needed to be all gruff and serious. And while Capcom definitely improved their writing over the years, likely by hiring actual writers, it still manages to be completely off of its fucking rocker despite that. Something about the juxtaposition of this extremely serious presentation being done by characters mostly responsible for scenes like I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? It's pretty fucking funny to me. It really puts the entire story in this rather strange light, where nothing is to be taken seriously and you just kinda drift off into this comatose state in which you accept just about everything the game decides to throw at you, being really shitty gameplay. A big giveaway as to what type of game this is, is that it has the fucking audacity to start off with a bloody quick time event. It's a cover based third person shooter is uh, what I'm trying to say here pretty much. The first actual thing you do is mash X to get to safety, followed by a bunch of corridor walkie cinematic sections which isn't exactly amazing but at least they were honest by setting the right tone. That tone being fuck. Normally, I wouldn't really be into this, but the sheer fucking insanity of some of the shit they make you do here makes it very hard for me not to crack a smile whenever the game goes off its fucking tits again. Once it settles down though, you might notice that there's an actual game here. A game where you walk around in very linear, set-piece based levels, mostly shooting at bullet sponges and occasionally flipping a switch or twiddle a knob to do a puzzle. All three of our heroes' campaigns play it that differently as well. Leon is horror, Chris is frantic, shooty bang bang and bald man and cutie are all about gimmicks and melee which is a very neat idea but this really only extends to the first two to three hours of their respective campaigns as afterwards they all tend to transform into frantic shooty bang bang that while it does lean very heavily on its older brothers manages to bring some neat little changes to the table 
like how the camera is now completely 360 degrees rotatable and separated from your character. No tank controls needed here. Or what about the fucking fuck as fuck melee, which is pretty much the best thing in this entire game. I mean, pile driving zombies? Hell yeah, dude. And even the menus and UI, while definitely a bit unorthodox, are pretty neatly streamlined compared to the rather slow and somewhat awkward inventories of yore. With additions like this, it's almost as if they set out to make an action game. So there's no way in hell this game will end up being a hugely dysfunctional mess, right? Oh. If you're making an action game, the most important thing is being able to see the action. Devil May Cry has a very zoomed out camera. Counter Strike is in first person, you're right there. And Hotline Miami has a bird's eye view, bright colors, and is clear as a crisp spring morning. But this is a fucking Resident Evil game, and Capcom can never end up sticking to just one thing. So naturally, this game is darker than Master J's Hitler jokes, and the camera is really zoomed the fuck in and diabolically slow because that's what RE4 was like and also fuck you. Which when paired with the tight corridors leads to the camera frequently spazzing out whenever it touches anything. Also, I just constantly found myself struggling with the camera's controls in general. Thing is, is that when I'm controlling an external third-person camera, I like to feel as if I'm pulling the camera rather than pushing, i.e. inverted. But when actually controlling the character's perspective in first person or in a game like this whilst aiming for instance, I like my shit to be normal because I'm not a fucking freak. Problem is though is that because of the now fully rotatable camera, Resident Evil 6 has both an aim mode and a look around mode, where in the first instance the camera is relative to the character and in the other it is treated as a floating separate entity. And while I do appreciate the fuck out of the fact that they have separate settings for both, it's also very fucking confusing as for me it means that I either have to use the same scheme for both and get used to everything feeling unnatural for one of the components or do separate schemes which also sucks dick because it means I have to constantly reevaluate my muscle memory whenever I switch between aiming and walking. So considering that and how the game is still 80% corridors I think they would have been better off had they kept the controls tied to where your character is looking. In the game's defense though, the Resident Evil series has always excelled in panic. Not necessarily being scary, but instead instilling a sense of oh! into the player. Things like running out of ammo, struggling with controls, not having saved in hours and being low on health, and in a way dealing with both inverted and regular camera controls and not being able to see because of the thick fucking blur and overt darkness does kind of seem like a really twisted sort of continuation of that. Well. Probably not, but I at least consider the possibility. Gotta be uh, ob objective and stuff. Present multiple angles. Yeah. yeah. It's also good to see that you still take damage when mid gameplay event triggers happen. I love that. Great addition. By far, my biggest issue though is that the game tends to overstay its welcome, not only as a whole, but within some individual parts as well. Like, there's this graveyard section, for instance, where you're required to fight a bunch of infinitely spawning zombie dudes for a good 10 minutes because you need to go to the cathedral. Only then, once you get there, a wee pupper takes off with the key and runs all the way back to the beginning of the level. Uh-oh! So, you run back, all the while killing more infinitely spawning Zambinis, of course, to get the key, go through the door again, only to fall into a big hole with, you guessed it, more infinitely spawning Zombos. So, you get back up there again, meet up with your bitch, and then you finally reach the cathedral. But wait, it is not over yet. As you need to fight about three more waves of infinitely spawning slambies, along with a handful of really strong ones that cripple the ever-living shit out of you. You've got mail. If I had sucked at the game, I totally would have died here about three to four times. I didn't, of course, but it easily could have happened based on scientific research what I did. All in all, this entire section lasts about 45 minutes, even though its size, scope, and variety would suggest something along the lines of 15 minutes. 
And obviously, there are many, 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 many more sections like this. No chill, the game, is what I wrote down in my notes while frustrated. After having spent ages running around that desolate town, fighting a giant zombie, fighting a giant zombie, and then fighting two giant zombies. All the while, the camera clipped, quick time events happened, and the rather obnoxious bombastic soundtrack kept lugging away in the background. I'd go over how one giant zombie would have been fun and three just a bit too much, but I just established how I feel the game overstays its welcome. As much as I do enjoy the sheer insanity of the louder parts though, I mean, while dying more often than not feels super duper unfair because of the jankiness, some of the death scenes are entirely fucking amazing, and the cathartic nature of both the gunplay and the melee still kept most of it fun enough for me. I do have to say that on the rare occasions where shit isn't blasting on full force, it gets so fucking good. Shit, that's no way to go out. Like this lovingly crafted Chinese apartment with a wee fan, a teensy little jump scare, a stupendously detailed mahjong room, and these really cramp hallways with spider webs, broken electric cables, and water dripping down from the dilapidated ceiling. It is exactly shit like that that made the pre-rendered backgrounds of yours stand out as well. And I absolutely love it to death. So it is a bit of a shame that most of the game ended up like this. I'd say that the game's biggest objective issue is that all of the reasons why I do like it still could just as well be seen as flaws. I mean, while it takes the series in a very different direction, all of the trademark RE staples are still there. Cause not only was it designed to attract newer fans, but also to pander to the older ones. This flat out doesn't work. It isn't attractive to people that play slow-paced horror games, nor is it at all appealing to kids that play CSGO and Minecraft ad nauseum. And as such, it is a big fat failure. However, it does very much fit in the very specific niche that I'm dubbing. I owned a PS2 and or Dreamcast and I enjoyed all of the Japanese vomit released on there. Like, it's a typical big budget, big dick Japanese action adventure game that have become very rare over the last five years or so with local interest leaning towards mobile games. And Come on, how many fucking games have you fight naked slime titties, destroy multiple helicopters with gatling guns and fight an invisible snake? It is just such an absolute mad cunt of a game. And a very glorious example of what the paint huffing directors over at Capcom can do with a few million dollars. Sure, at times it made me want to shove my head through my fucking controller, but looking back at it those aren't the parts that stick with me. No. When I think of RE6, I think of Leon's Golden Locks. How oh, it starts off with killing the US president and the fact that the villain is a stereotypical mustache twirler who just shows up on a whim all like, Nah, Leon, I was waiting for you. And then Leon's all like, Ugh, Simmons. And then shit explodes and he turns into a giant fly. And hey, it's definitely one of the very few games that I can think of that has a turret section that's actually genuinely fun to play as you're unable to die. Not to mention the bit where you have to escape a fucking avalanche. It truly is spectacle done right. Meaning that it's interactive, not punishing, and easy to control. China. 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 China.